Master School of Management was established 60 years ago to attract people from developing countries to offer them uh, a broad program in different fields and then let them return to their countries and contribute uh, to the development of the countries. So this was the birth of the so-called uh, international uh, institutes that were founded in the 50s of the last century and MSM was one of those institutes. Uh, at that time, it were five institutes that were, institute, uh, were established in different fields, and MSM has specialized in uh, management education in and for uh, developing countries and emerging economies. The new development cooperation policy of the Dutch government you know, has recently decided to focus on more on global issues. So these are four uh, focus areas, and in particular, if I consider the uh, stability of fragile states, now I see a strong link of issues uh, the um, Club of Madrid is concerned with. So we can link these different uh, subjects from different perspectives, and I hope that, and I'm sure that uh, my colleagues, being uh, present here from Master School of Management, can also contribute to this discussion and to the. A solution of these, uh, as I have learned, the problems of the shared society. I must admit, the shared society is a quite new concept for me, and I was wondering who has invented this. Because spontaneously, I would have said, shared society, this sounds really static. You should more say the sharing uh, society, you know? so to put it more dynamically. And I think this is what we are concerned with in these. Uh, we are revolutionary times where we have to find these solutions. Anyway, I am very impressed about uh, the Club of Madrid and its engagement, and I hope that my school can contribute a little bit no, to, to your discussion. And we believe that our experience in government gives us some uh, opportunity to support and to advise uh, current political leaders and also civil society leaders in dealing with the many challenges they face. Our perspective tries to be generic, holistic and multifaceted, because many of the problems facing the world and individual countries are interlinked and cannot be dealt with in isolation from each other. One such is the phenomenon of intergroup tensions and how to solve intergroup divisions. In 2007, about five years ago now, the members of the Club of Madrid decided that this should be a priority issue in our further activities. We often quote the statistic that uh, in over 90% of the countries in the world, at least 10% of the population is different in terms of race, language, caste, religion or other uh, ethnic factors. And we know that in many countries such differences cause serious social problems and violence. We called our initiative the Shared Societies Project, but you were right, sir. Uh, the sharing society is perhaps a very good idea uh, because we wanted to choose, by, by, by mentioning it like this, to choose a distinctive phrase which caused people to stop and think what this means. Many people say they believe in inter-ethnic harmony, but how do they think this can uh, be realized. Do we follow those who say the best basis for good intergroup relations is for the other group to go away? That means the uh, minority group, of course. Do we agree with those who say that good fences make good neighbors? And as long as the other groups keep to themselves, everything will be fine? Or how do we respond to those who claim that everything would be all right if the people who are different from us became like us, like uh, the same music, follow the same religion, dressed like us, and so on? No, we feel none of these options is really tenable. They don't lead to harmonious relations. Whether we try to assimilate people or keep them separate or force them out, we are building up resentments that will not eventually come out, often with violent results. Nor are, they, are these morally acceptable solutions because they try to impose the preferences of one group, one section of our society on others. And we don't like it when some other group tries to do that to us. So our vision is 
not a society which is owned by one group in the population, but is a place which belongs to all and everyone is expected to behave well, to obey and respect the law, to take responsibility and care for it, a shared or in the future sharing society. We believe this is the only way to create long-term sustainable communities. Development of a shared society has positive impact on development in other areas. We believe that shared societies can be more ecologically sustainable, build more social <coughs> capital and enhance economic well-being. The benefits of shared societies seem self-evident, but I know that some leaders and their supporters in much divided societies just don't want to know that. <coughs> so it's important that those communities and their leaders can be helped to understand how short-sighted their view is and that if they are more open to others, everyone, including their own people, will benefit. And they also need support in finding ways to do that. Maastricht lies on one of the ethnic fault lines of Europe. Today, those fault lines don't compare to the intensity of the fault lines of religion and race of which we are so aware today. But for the people who lived here in this region 350 years ago, their divisions were very real. I invite you to look around this beautiful city and you will see impressive fortifications, a sign of the tensions that existed. Maastricht is now part of a multilingual Euro region. And this is because it has accepted difference and embraced it. It has created a shared society.